Voting is underway in Mongolia as locals head to the polls to pick their next government. It's the first election following constitutional changes aimed at increasing representation in the government. Well, long queues were seen outside some voting booths, which opened from 7 a.m. local time. There are more than 2,000 polling stations across the country, which is large geographically, but has a small population of 3.4 million people. Voting will close at 10 p.m. local time. With automated ballot counting, preliminary results are expected as early as Saturday morning. Some analysts believe the ruling Mongolian People's Party will retain its majority in parliament, but other parties are hoping to keep on voter discontent amid a deep-seated public anger over corruption and the state of the economy. I fear that we have done that. Campaign is a very business man. So we're going to try to get the Yamaran in better. But the Corona is too much. We're going to try to get the Yamaran in better. I fear that we have done that. Campaign is a very business man. So we're going to campaign to get the Yamaran in better. Well, CNA's Pocock Ying tells us what has changed in today's vote and why global powers have their eyes on the polls. Mongolia is a multi-party democracy that's sandwiched between China and Russia. Elections here are closely watched by Western nations to see if Mongolia can maintain its democratic values. Historically, Mongolia is closer to Moscow, as it was a satellite state of the Soviet Union. Today, it still relies on Russia for electricity and fuel. But economically, it is more dependent on China, which accounts for more than 80% of Mongolia's exports, mostly coal and minerals. To avoid being totally dependent on Russia and China, Mongolia has a deliberate third neighbor policy, where it tries to build ties with democracies around the world. Since 2012, it has been a global partner of NATO, even sending peacekeeping troops to Iraq and Afghanistan. And in recent times, Mongolia's abundance of critical natural resources has also drawn the attention of its Western partners. They are eyeing large reserves of copper as well as rare earth elements, which are indispensable in the making of electronics, semiconductors, green energy technologies and defense infrastructure at a time of fierce competition with China. Over the last few years, top officials from the West have made trips to Mongolia. They include French President Emmanuel Macron and British Foreign Minister David Cameron. Its Prime Minister has also visited Berlin and Washington. With Mongolia's resurgence on the international stage, more countries will be following today's election that features some major changes. The old parliament has 76 seats. 50 more will be added, taking the total to 126. This is to raise representation, especially for the densely populated capital. Having more seats could also make room for more women and younger lawmakers. And on top of the usual first-past-the-post system, 48 lawmakers will be chosen based on proportional representation from party lists. In theory, this will benefit smaller parties and move parliament from a one-party supermajority now to a multi-party system. Electoral districts have also been reduced from 29 to 13. This means the next parliament will be able to better focus on regional and national development rather than local interests. Now, even with these changes, the ruling Mongolian People's Party has a good shot at extending eight years of uninterrupted rule. The MPP is touting strong economic growth of 7% last year. It also moved plans along to build a metro system in the capital to ease congestion. Ahead of the vote, the government increased pensions and social welfare allowances and offered low-interest loans to herders in the countryside. The main opposition Democratic Party, on the other hand, is zooming in on corruption scandals in recent years, including allegations of a coal mafia run by high-ranking officials of the ruling party, which triggered street protests two years ago. Indeed, observers believe corruption will be a key issue at this election, trumping worries over air pollution in the city or even economic inequality. Regardless of which party comes in first, the new parliament will likely have to resolve those concerns and focus on attracting foreign investment, especially from Mongolia's so-called third neighbor.